In today's globalized world, economic activities have shifted from largely domestic affairs to more complex international relationships, and that in it itself poses new challenge. Consequently, one of the most significant challenge that developing economies have to face relates to the attainment of competitive advantages in the key economic sectors. As the UN Millennium Project noted, despite the increasing globalization of technology, the involvement of developing countries in producing new technologies and innovation is almost negligible as the production of technological knowledge is concentrated in industrial countries and developing nations. Various successful administrations in Nigeria have come with different policies and programs to advance technological growth. On this edition of Frontiers, we shall be exploring efforts of the present administration in promoting indigenous technology and innovation. Our guest on the program is the Director General of the National Office for Technology Acquisition and Promotion, NOTAP, Dr. Dan Azumi Mohammed Ibrahim. You're welcome to Frontiers. Thank you very much and hello viewers. And I am Obiageli Ugoke. Now, there's no doubt that um, Nigeria have so many talented people. How can you describe the innovation of Nigerians? You see, um, innovation, you are not reinventing a wheel. You are just adding something on what has already been developed to suit your own environment. But what you are looking at is the technological development of the country. Um, no country would develop if no effort, strong effort is put in funding research and development. Like any sector of the economy, the educational sector is not well funded. So research and development, in my own opinion, is most affected. Um, the scenario on ground is uh, because of poor funding of research and development in our establishments, in our research establishments, in our universities, in our polytechnics. Now, the researchers now strategically now decide, or maybe as part of their own strategy of survival, concentrate mainly on basic research that does not likely to translate into product and services. Um, if you look at the number of publications made by our own researchers, it's one of the highest in Africa, but that does not translate. What we expect the product of research and development to be is to come out with something that is intended to solve a problem. What we expect by now, Nigerians should have been able to develop the refinery, establish refineries based on our own indigenous technologies, technologies developed by Nigerians, refine our petroleum and crude oil to meet our petroleum products requirements. But unfortunately, we still import. So the issue is, where are those technologies supposed to be generated? Because they are product of research and development. They are product of skills. Our tertiary institutions, the universities, the polytechnics, the research establishments, I expected to come out with technology to solve the problems of the country. That is what is done. But for a long period of time, because we've been getting fantastic foreign exchange earnings through the sales of crude oil, now we have the liberty, we have the luxury of importing everything we wanted, including toothpick. That doesn't augur well in the development of any nation. So in my own opinion, what we have to do is we have to strengthen our research and development mechanism in this country. How do you strengthen it? We have the capacities. We have people who are intelligent, who have had exposures outside the country, acquired some technological issues. But when they come back to the country, the facilities are not there for them to work on. So in my own opinion, we strengthen the, the research capabilities of our institutions. Then we also come with a policy where we have the competencies and the infrastructure is there, the laboratories are good, the workshops are good, technologies will begin to evolve naturally. Then we come with a policy that, yes, where we have perfected our own technology, we don't allow any technology to come into this country. We use what we have, we patronize what we have, that is how we developed. But if you look at and compare us with the developing countries, they are constantly 
on research and development. They are investing heavily on research and development. That is why it's per second per second they are checking out uh, technologies. So as a developing country, we have to know our priorities. We have to do away with hunger. We have to do away with basic um, need, needs of life. Then our scientists would begin to think positively. So in my own opinion, we allow technologies. While we don't have those technologies, we allow them to come into the country. But we prepare what I call a human magnet. We have competent, intelligent Nigerians who would be able, after some time, absorb some of those technologies, understand the workings of those technologies, so that by the time the, 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 the expatriates leave, we should be able to handle it this much ourselves. All right, you, uh, one <coughs> thing here now is to be innovative. Yeah. And another is the ability to have a right over one's innovation. Yeah. Of what impact is the issue of uh, patenting to innovators? Yes, yes, yes. Well, that is very essential because patenting is like you are protecting the intellectual assets you have. It's like you have a land that does not have certificate of occupancy. Anybody can encroach on that land. But where you have a land that has its own certificate of occupancy, nobody would encroach. So also your intellectual assets. How do you protect your intellectual assets? If you come out with any invention or innovation that has good potential to translate into products and services, and you expect to make money out of it, the first and the most important thing is for you to protect it. Even if you want to publish, protect it first before you publish. From but those who may intend yes, to yes, yes. copy your yeah, yeah, ideas. Yeah. Because the scenario is, yes, we are in a rush, particularly um, our researchers. If you hit any innovation, you are excited, you are in a hurry to publish. Once you publish it is in public domain, anybody can take it and make money out of it. So we need to sensitize the university community, the research establishments, on the need, first of all, protect that intellectual asset before you publish. Once you protect it, even if you publish, nobody will take it and make use of it. So what do we do? As far back as 2006, NOTAP, along with um, all intellectual property organization, wanted to change the scenario, the narrative, to change the attitudes, the weak culture of intellectual property in the universities, in the research establishment, where technology is expected to evolve. We establish what we call intellectual property and technology transfer offices. These are offices that are meant to sensitize Nigerians on how to protect their intellectual property, on how to even have access to over six million patented technologies across the globe. Um, if you are working on mechatronics, and maybe you are confused which area you want to concentrate and see opportunities within the country. By the time you go into that website, you'll see over a million patented technology on nanotechnology. So now you can now look at it, see the ones you'll be able to modify so that it becomes Nigerian technology. What I mean is we don't have to reinvent the wheel, but we can leverage on what other people had done. So not have, after establishing, we also assist innovators. Whoever comes out with any innovation, that we feel has a good potential, we assist in protecting it. How do we protect it? We call you, you fill the necessary forms. Where you cannot, we guide you. Where you cannot write the claims, we write the claims on your behalf. We take it to the patent registry. We pay the patenting fee. We only call you to come and collect your patent certificates. That is our contribution to ensure that, because that is the first stage of commercialization of any innovation. When we realize that we can develop technologically, if we don't use the, 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 the intellectual assets we have in this country, we should not be under illusion somebody will come and develop our own country. The development of our nation securely rests on us. So the earlier we realize it, and technologies coming out from our system must have to be fully protected. If we don't protect it, somebody will take it outside the country, makes money out of it, and brings it back. There are instances. Sometimes I could read from some complaint that somebody came and looked at our pounder machine, blah, 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 took it outside, brought it back. You understand? If that thing had been protected, nobody would do that. So it's not that expensive, I'm telling you, but sometimes if you have to use... No tab itself does not really charge the no, innovators. We don't. We do it free of charge. We do it free of charge. We pay on behalf of the innovator the patenting fees at the patent registry. And I must commend the collaborative effort between NOTAP and the patent registry. 
so that we continuously work together to improve on the poor culture. Oh, of you will agree potential. with me that that's very, very encouraging, especially yeah. to our young innovators. But yeah. most of them don't know about this fact. Well, yeah, but well, well we, try, we, we try to educate. And um, I think this, um, this opportunity you have given me to come and talk to the nation and to the whole world will further and give impetus on this. They, they, will they will know come. about it. All they right. would come. We'll, we'll pause for a break. I'll get back to you. Thank you. You are on to Frontiers. And the focus on this edition of the program is encouraging indigenous technology. And our guest has been Dr. Dan Azumi Mohammed Ibrahim, the Director General of National Office for Technology Acquisition and promotion. We'll take a short break now. The program continues shortly. Welcome back. And my guest has been the DG Nota, Dr. Dan Azumi Ibrahim Mohammed. Commercialization is key in uh, when it comes to innovations, right? Mm -hmm. um, is there any support to ensure innovations don't remain on the shelves? Yeah, I think um, this is a very difficult um, process. Um, it's not only peculiar to developing countries, but even the developed countries. Whatever you come out and you want to commercialize, there must be some framework, institutional framework to assist. As far as government is concerned, um, government needs to come in and assist. Unlike the developed countries, where the industries and the academias are working together. What I mean, if a research and development result comes out from the universities, the companies have either fully sponsored that research because the need for their company is there, so that it is almost ready for commercialization. But here in the devel in developing countries, because most of the industries, most of the multinationals are from outside the country, and their interest is not to develop the indigenous technology. Their interest is to come and sell their products and services. They make money, they take the money outside the country. So if we want to commercialize our research and innovation um, in, in efforts, we have to put a lot of things in place. We have to have an institutional framework. For now, efforts are being made by this administration because the National Research and Innovation Council has been integrated, which Mr. President is the chair. Within the National Research and Innovation Council, there is going to be a National Research and Innovation Fund. This is the fund that would be utilized to move what is commercial as well to the next level. Unless we have that institutional framework, we, unless we have that structure, our research and development efforts will remain on the shelves for a very long period. And we should not be under an illusion some of those multinationals would assist you to commercialize your research and development efforts. No. Has been integrated, which Mr. President is the chair. Within the National Research and Innovation Council, there is going to be a National Research and Innovation Fund. This is the fund that would be utilized to move what is commercial as well to the next level. Unless we have that institutional framework, we, unless we have that structure, our research and development efforts will remain on the shelves for a very long period. And we should not be under an illusion some of those multinationals would assist you to commercialize your research and double efforts. No. Is there any form of uh, follow up in terms of um, mentoring, monitoring, and evaluation? Yes, we, you see, um, the National Research and Innovation Council, which I told you, is already getting the legal backing of the National Assembly. Um, it has passed, it has been passed by the Senate and is being taken to the National, uh, sorry, to the House of Reps for concurrency. Once that legal framework is in place, then there will be fund, National Research and Innovation Fund. So the Honorable Minister of Science and Technology is champion this and he's working so hard to ensure that that national research and innovation institutional framework is in place. Once it is in place, I'm telling you, it will be a content lift for Nigeria to move to the next level. There is Executive Order 5 that the Honorable Minister of Science and Technology now instituted, and it was signed by Mr. President in, two in, in this year, in February this year. It is, in my own opinion, and in, in the opinion of any patriotic Nigerian, it's a revolution. 
revolution in the sense that we must have to begin to engage our Nigerian professionals in handling projects in this country. Gone should be the days when everything is coming from We're outside. We're going to involve our uh, um, Nigerians. Uh, you see, the issue is the issue is the issue is if there is going to if there is any major contract, look around Abuja. The major operators are foreigners. You understand? But this executive order is designed to see that Nigerian professionals are engaged right from the conceptualization of the idea to the execution, you understand, and to the handover. So in that case, if we bring out our intelligent engineers, say we want to construct a very complex bridge, which we don't have the competencies within the country. If we have Nigerians who have good knowledge of it, but there are gaps, they are free to go outside the country to get a technical partner that would assist in executing that project. So while they are executing that project, our human magnets are capturing the process. By the time the technical partner goes, challenge them with another project. And they, will execute. they would execute it. It might not be as good as the first one. After the second one is executed by indigenous Nigerians, now you can bring in experts to criticize what they have done. Even if it means bringing somebody from outside for a fee, Criticize what we have done. They will that say, will add this, add this, add this. Yes. So by the time those criticisms are incorporated in the next one, I'm telling you the third one would be better, by far better than the second one. That is how we developed. You don't expect us to reach perfection overnight. So we have intelligent Nigerians. We just need to have a policy in place, and that executive order is meant to address that. The other issue is, even if you have a contract, you are coming from outside, and we have what we call local content. Local content in terms of the materials you should use. Simply because, the materials you should yeah, use coming locally, from yeah, Nigeria, coming from Nigeria. Coming from Nigeria. Exactly. I'm telling you, we've seen instances. I may not have to mention a company. When we are processing their technology transfer agreement um, in our office, I look through the file. And I saw they were importing calcium carbonate from as far as China. And we have deposit of calcium carbonate but, in but this... God, what is holding us back? Because we know Nigeria is as a country that is naturally endowed. Yeah, you see, you see, we need a policy. After the policy, the regulators must have to work, must have to be patriotic to their own country. I have not concluded that story I was trying to tell you. When I saw them importing calcium carbonate, from as far as China, I say, what, why don't we use Nigerian calcium carbonate? We have several since deposits of calcium it. carbonate exactly. since we have it. They say Nigerian carbon, calcium carbonate has a lot of quartz because it affects their machinery. Then I say, we need technology to remove those quartz, to upgrade Nigerian calcium carbonate to the, to, level, to, the level, to, the, to the level you want to. We say, well, I'm afraid if in the next two years you don't do anything, we won't give you approval. I'm telling you that thing worked. Wow. Within a year, they came back and say, yes. They've been able now to source their calcium carbonate from one small company in Ogun State, I think. Within a year, they bought, cal they bought calcium carbonate worth 160 million naira from that small company. Now the company is expanding. Now who would ever come and tell us that he c we cannot use Nigerian calcium carbonate in their operations? So the regulators have to be very firm. You so under have to be very patriotic. Because God has blessed these countries with a lot of resources, there is no state in this government, no any local government in this country that does not have one raw materials or the other. What we need is technology to refine them to reach such a level. So once we are patriotic and we begin to see we have to use what is available in this country, then the producers of those services will be expanding. Look at the rice issue. We are in recession. And now that has now revolution. agricultural I revolution. Tell you, a lot of Two, Nigerians three years, are now more than ninety percent of the rice requirement are met. Yes, what most Nigerians. Well, yes, three years, three, three four years, months. more than ninety percent of the rice we consume are imported. But now that importation has drastically reduced to ten percent. So if we are serious, I am telling you, we will move. There is nothing God has not given us. We have hardworking, intelligent, and innovative Nigerians. And God has given us resources everywhere. So we just need to be focused. We just need to be patient. And we just need to be patriotic. And eat Nigeria rice. Now for a long time, it's Nigeria rice I, did, I eat in my house. 
and the taste I'm telling you is by far better than the imported and one. Very rich. Very rich. And very rich. So 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 actually it's a responsibility to all of us. You have your own part to play. I have my own part to play. Everybody has his own part. So in other words, you are telling us that what the successes recorded in agricultural sector so far can also be achieved. Of course, there is no any sector that we cannot achieve that. We cannot achieve that. There is no any sector we cannot achieve that. How can other Nigerians key into your policies to make them self-reliant and employer of labor? You see, um, every organization has its own mandate. Our mandate is to encourage and promote. We don't provide funding, but we, re we, 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 we work hand in hand with the funding agencies to see how some of our technologies are now converted into product and services. I can remember we made the initiative, we had a meeting with the Bank of Industry because there are quite a number of technologies that are really ready for market, very good technologies that are really good for market. But the researcher has done his own part. He doesn't have the money to move it to the next level. So, and um, there is no yet any, any structure on ground to provide that. But once the National Research and Innovation Fund is in place, we could get it. But meanwhile, before the National Research and Innovation Fund comes into being or becomes fully established, we have to look elsewhere. Bank of Industry is a developmental bank. We had a meeting with them. They say well, they needed about four. They needed all the flagship projects we feel they would be able to fund. We came out with about 45. We had a meeting with them, we pruned them down to six. And I'm telling you, they are working hard to see how they provide facility for these six to come off. One of the most important one is a vaccine against typhoid fever, which has been developed by a professor in Federal University of Technology, MENA. The guy has worked on that for over 20 years. If he, if he vaccinates you with his vaccine, for the next three years, you won't get typhoid fever. And what we get from outside, are typhus specific. You see, typhoid fever is caused by different strains of microorganisms, about four of them. So sometimes if you take a drug against only one species, it might not cure you completely, but his drug or his vaccine has wide spectrum application. It can take care of all the uh, species of um, uh, typhoid. So now, he had done the clinical trial, He's even administrating into to, to people now, just at a very small level. But we need to develop it because it's a product that can sell across Africa. And exactly. not only Africa, but any developing countries because it's, it's related to... But how can um, a NOTAB assist in creating awareness for such innovation? Yeah, what we do is, yes, the Federal Minister of Science and Technology, we used to have what we call um, Techno Expo technology exposition. We used to hold it annually um, where we expose some of those innovations to researchers, to the bankers, to the communities. So, but um, since we have about 17 researchers in Federal Ministry of Science and Technology, and um, others are also holding their own. Now, it took the wisdom of the present Minister of Science and Technology. He said, look, why don't you all converge together and be showing our products once every year. We have had it, the first one, Techno Expo, we did it, the first one in Abuja, the second one in Abuja. Now the next one is coming in January in Inugu. So this gives opportunity for the private sector to go and see innovations that has potential to translate into program services. What they only need is to put in their money and most of those um, technologies have been patented by NOTA. So anybody who wants to come and put in his money it is protected, and he's sure he is going to recoup his investment. So that is what we do. Either we, we promote and we link you up to sources of funding, but we don't have the fund to provide for you to move it to the next level. And the researchers also don't have the fund to move their inventions to the next level. Tabs, what are other roles of NOTAB in all of these? Yes. You see, the other role of NOTAB, you see, if I would have said we control the flow of foreign technology into this country. We regulate the flow of foreign technology into this country. How do we regulate? If any Nigerian say wants to establish a manufacturing outfit and he doesn't have a competent company in Nigeria that will help him do it, the only option is to go outside and look for a credible, competent, experienced partner. 
and they enter into agreement. So it is that agreement we register in NOTAM. But before we register it, we have to subject that agreement into evaluation under three major perspectives, legal perspective, economic perspective, but more importantly, technical perspective. Under the legal perspective, we ensure that all the clauses are in tandem with the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This is a perspective that should ensure that Nigerians are trained in that technology, human capacity development, so that gradually we absorb some of those technology and reduce dependency and foreign technology. Through this exercise, where we feel we cannot register because the technology is readily available, where we feel Nigeria has should change, we cut it. We saved the nation over 250 billion naira. That would have gone outside the country as capital flight in the last six years. That is one. The second issue we also look at, if you see the trend of the technologies coming into the country, we see areas where Nigeria spends a lot of money. And one of these areas is the software. So we draw the attention of the universities, of the research establishments, to focus their research and development efforts towards reducing dependency, towards reducing the quantum amount of money we spend in licensing. So, but the universities, the research establishments are not responding the way we are expecting because they are constrained. So we have to have to come out with a policy. We sat down with the stakeholders in this country, we came up with a policy which we are adhering strictly to that policy. For any software that is registrable in this country, not off the shelf, before we register it, we insist that Nigerian IT firm must be involved in the deployment of that software. If you are involved in deployment and the maintenance, whether they like it or not, you will capture a good part of those technologies. All right. Your words for Nigerian oh. youth, as well as those who want to remain job seekers. Yes. You see, Nigeria, God has blessed us with talents. Our population is equally our strength. And majority of our population are youth. They are energetic, intelligent. And uh, we need to tap those intelligence from our youth so that we can move our nation forward. What I urge them is, yes, if they have anything to protect, we are there in NOTAP to assist to protect their inventions. But I also urge Nigerians to be patriotic, to begin to um, buy what is made in Nigeria, eat what is made in Nigeria, you understand? It is through this that we will encourage the producers of those services to expand. We have no option but to work together to move our nation forward. Let us not be under any illusion. Somebody will come from somewhere and develop our country. Development of our country securely rests on us Nigerians. We have no any country but Nigeria. Together, we we'll work hard and move, and move it to the next level. Thank you very much, thank Dr. Zan Azumi. We you thank you for coming on thank Frontiers. It's okay. You're thank welcome you once again. Yeah. And that does it on this edition of the program Frontiers, which centered on encouraging indigenous technology. With me has been the Director General of National Office for Technology Acquisition and Promotion, NOTAB, Dr. Dan Azumi Mohammed Ibrahim. Thank you very much for your time with us and do stay tuned for yet another edition of the program. My name is Obiagili Ugoke. Thanks for watching. <music>